I'm Mike Hanewalt, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and I'm here in front of a soybean field um, in northern Ohio here, and um, the beans are uh, continuing to progress through their growth stages, and we're well past uh, June 21st, the summer solstice, so these beans have been, been flowering and have entered the reproductive uh, stages for quite a while, and we're getting into that time period where um, it's time to start thinking about potentially applying a fungicide to our soybean fields. And so I wanted to just uh, spend a little bit of time talking about that. Um, fungicide on soybeans has been one of the most consistent um, PFR studies that we've had as far as a positive return on investment. And um, especially this year, we've had kind of a wet period with uh, a lot of days of high humidity and uh, a lot of rainfall. And uh, that can lead to uh, favorable conditions for disease to develop as well. And so um, we might have the potential to see an even bigger um, return on investment for a, a fungicide application. So um, something I wanted to just share a few thoughts with you on uh, the timing of, of fungicide and soybeans and then some other things to think about as well. So uh, first of all, when it comes to timing, so if you look at the chart on your screen, you'll see um, that over the years that we've uh, tested this, uh, multiple years and multiple PFR sites, um, very consistently that R3 is the growth stage that you want to be spraying a fungicide on soybeans. Uh, if you're too early at R2 or too late at R4, a lot less of a chance of, of being profitable, but hitting that R3 um, is very important. And so it's important to understand uh, what the R3 growth stage is. And so I've got a soybean plant here um, that's flowered from top to bottom. And so that would be the R2 growth stage, which is full flower. And uh, R2 lasts for quite some time, but R3 is a lot faster, about seven to 10 days. So it's important to be able to identify it correctly. And so what you do is you start um, at the top of this soybean plant and you count down uh, the top four nodes. And so we start up here with these nodes that are just developing and count one, two, three, four. So we look at those top four nodes and we look to see if we have a 3 16 of an inch long pod in those top four nodes. Uh, now you'll have much, uh, you'll have more pods that are longer um, down in the lower part of the plant because uh, soybeans, the reproductive phases work their way from the bottom up to the top. But in these top four, we're looking for a 3 16 of an inch long pod. And uh, so once you see that, you're at the start of R3 and that will last for, like I said earlier, about seven to 10 days until you get a three quarters of an inch long pod in those, those top four nodes. And so that is the, the R3 uh, growth stage that you're aiming for. Why is R3 so important? Why do we think it, it works? Um, well, uh, how, how a soybean plant develops is that the trifoliate that is attached to the node is what actually supplies all the energy to feed that node and, and put on the flowers and then eventually pods and then seed at that node. And according to the University of Illinois, 70% of your soybean yield comes from nodes 6 through 13. And most of the time when you get to the R3 growth stage, you're normally at about the V12 to V14 stage, uh, where nodes 12 to 14 are, are the, the topmost uh, nodes at that point. And so all of, almost all of those nodes 6 through 13 are visible at that point are going to be receptive to the fungicide, and so you're protecting the nodes that provide the bulk of your yield. Uh, which is why it's it's pretty important. So once you've identified the R3 growth stage, um, then it's time to decide what fungicide product are you going to use. And there are several products that are PFR proven. You can see those on your screen right now. Um, so PFR proven are products that we test over at least three years at multiple locations, and they average a positive return on investment. But you don't have to use um, only a fungicide from this list to be successful. One of the key common factors across all these fungicides is they contain multiple mode of actions. So usually at least a strobilurin um, mode of action, and so that gives you um, some protection and kind of a preventative um, against future disease infections and also helps with plant health. And then it also contains um, a triazole, uh, which helps to kill any fungus or any disease that's currently present there. And sometimes you have an SDHI mix in there as well, but the multiple mode of action is what's most important um, to give you the best, uh, best coverage of these, these plants. And so any, any fungicide that you pick that's got those multiple mode of actions should be, be effective in this case. Now, when you go out and actually make the application, there's a few things to think about. So applying in the morning um, can help you uh, to increase your yield and, and ultimately your ROI. It's not a big yield bump, uh, usually only about a half bushel or, or so, um, but it, it does help a little bit because the plant is more receptive. It's more likely to take that fungicide into the leaves and um, then, you know, in, in essence, provide more benefit as well. And so if it looks like you're going to have a few good days to spray, especially if you're doing it yourself and you've got the opportunity to control when you get out in the field, um, hitting it in the morning when it's cooler or when there's dew out in the field can, can really help. 
Uh, carrier rate is also uh, important. Using higher rates of water helps to get more coverage on the plant. So 15 to 20 gallons um, is going to be our recommended rate as well based on the PFR data um, that we have tested. Now it's common to um, also add an insecticide when you go out to spray a fungicide. And we actually have two PFR proven insecticides that you apply at the R3 grow stage. Well, one note on the insecticide though is um, it's important to scout and see if you have any insect pests that are actually present at the time that you're making the application because an insecticide kills all insects in the field and there are a lot of beneficial insects out there as well. So when you're taking the time to scout to see if you're at the R3 growth stage, also look to see if you have any insect damage that might warrant uh, adding that insecticide uh, to your tank mix. And then lastly, if you're going to be going across the field, another common question is should I add a foliar feed? Um, to my, my spray tank um, as well to, to help uh, feed these beans and help them through those, those final growth stages. And we have several PFR proven foliar feed products as well. Um, you can see that you know in these later applications, the products that contain multiple nutrients, um, some of the common ones are sulfur, zinc, manganese, boron, and, and then sometimes um, others in there as well. Um, but those are the, the um, the products that, that tend to give us that, that positive return on investment. Again, you're not limited to just what's on this list, but these can give you a pretty good starting point. So um, if you have any questions about making a, a fungicide application to your soybeans, you know, uh, several farmers, it's something they do every year. Others um, may have never done it before and might be interested in trying. Um, but if you have any questions about that decision, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative, and we would be happy to help you. Thanks a lot and best of luck.